Tonight on WYFF News 4 Sports Special, Road to the Title. Tiger Nation is ready. Harry Tuttle, touchdown Clemson. Clemson seeking their second national championship. Our guys are fighters and they did a super, super job. Will the perfect season have the perfect ending? To win this game, it's just another, it's the next step. There are Tigers prowling in the desert. You know, you got to make them uncomfortable. 1,981 miles from home. We've already won. Clemson clutches with Alabama. A look high above University of Phoenix Stadium and a sea of orange. There is a little bit of crimson, but look at all the orange here in Glendale, Arizona. Welcome to Glendale, Arizona, the home of the Arizona Cardinals and the home of the College Football National Championship. I'm Brad Fralick. Over the next hour, we have a ton of content to lead you up to kickoff of this national championship game between Clemson and Alabama. The Tigers trying to win their first national championship since 1981. It's been 34 years for the Clemson Tigers. The Alabama Crimson Tide trying to do it for the fourth time in the last seven years. Stabo Sweeney on what they will have to do to win tonight. You know, this was our goal, was to have the opportunity to compete at the highest level. And, um, you know, not only are we getting a chance to do that, but we're getting a chance to play, you know, the University of Alabama, which, you know, to me uh, is, has been the standard in college football for a long time. You know, our players are very excited about the opportunity they've created for themselves to uh, have a chance to participate in uh, the college football playoff against uh, arguably the best team in college football, which is, you know, the Clemson Tigers. So, um, you know, our focus and attention is uh, to try to play the best game we possibly can. Both coaches very respectful of one another in that final press conference, and both coaches understand what is on the line tonight. Mark Dofer joining me now, and Dabo Sweeney in the storyline leading up to this game. It has been everywhere. Dabo Sweeney is from Alabama. He grew up in Pelham, Alabama. He played at Alabama and now has the opportunity to coach against the Tide for a national championship. And I don't think that Dabo Sweeney would have it any other way. He's been building and building and building in Clemson. And I've heard so many fans this week say, this is just the way that it had to be. You've got Goliath. Clemson, some of the national experts would say, is David. But for Dabo Sweeney, this game is sort of the pinnacle of everything, the pinnacle of his playing career, the pinnacle of his coaching career. Because as you said, the water cooler talk this week has been how cool would it be if Dabo Sweeney could win his first national championship as a coach against the team that he won a national championship with as a player. 1992 was when Dabo Sweeney won that national championship. He said he always dreamed growing up of playing for Bear Bryant. And he had the opportunity to walk on at Alabama. He earned a scholarship at Alabama when Gene Stallings was the head coach and then ultimately won a national championship in 1992. And since then, he went on to coach at Alabama. Uh, and then since then has taken over for the Tigers and for him to beat Alabama in his first shot at a national championship he has said would be awfully special. You've got to imagine that Dabo Sweeney's heart is just a hair torn. I mean here's the team that he says when you're born in Alabama your birth certificate is either stamped Auburn or Alabama. <laughs> Clearly his was stamped Alabama but he's also spent 13 years in Clemson and he has built this program and now here he is squaring off with his alma mater in the national championship. It, it's almost too perfect. It, he, he has said, and he has said this week, the story's already been written. All they've got to do now is go win the football game. In order for them to do that, they are going to have to get a huge performance out of their Heisman Trophy finalist, Deshaun Watson. I think so. And when you talk about Deshaun Watson, you're talking about a guy who can clearly beat you with his arm. He can also beat you with his feet. And that's exactly what he did against Oklahoma. On the other side, you look at Alabama running back Derrick Henry, the guy who won the Heisman Trophy, a guy who broke Herschel Walker's single-season SEC rushing record. You could not have two bigger stars in college football squaring off for college football's biggest prize. Deshaun Watson, quarterback of number one Clemson. Deshaun's a really good person, you know, who's been through a lot of adversity, overcame adversity with his injury, and then him by his mom just made me gain a lot more respect for him as a person and a player, you know what I'm saying? So he's, a, he's good people, and he works hard. The winner of this year's Heisman Trophy is Derrick Henry. We're friends, and... Uh, got to know each other a little bit, and um, you know that, that friendship is going to last for a long time. So, 
Uh, we're, we're, you know, cool guys and, and, and you know, good friends. I believe God winks at us. I believe that. But you gotta, you gotta be looking. You gotta pay attention to that. The pride of Pelham, Alabama. Dabo Sweeney trying to become the second Bama-born coach to lead Clemson to the national championship. We go one-on-one -on -one with Dabo Sweeney and Danny Ford in just a few moments. And we'll check in with our newest Clemson correspondent. Tiger center Jay Guillermo grills his teammates when road to the title continues in a moment. Everyone is talking about Alabama running back Derrick Henry in this game, and maybe rightfully so, but don't forget about this guy. Wayne Gallman now has the single-season rushing record at Clemson and will have a bit of a chip on his shoulder tonight. He feels like he has something to prove. It's tough to be the running back not so much talked about going into this game, but Wayne Gallman says he definitely belongs in this game. He has carried this Tigers rushing attack, 2,000 yard, two 1,000 yard rushers on this team. Deshaun Watson with over 1,000 yards and Wayne Gallman with over 1,000 yards. We bring in WIFF News 4's Ricardo Lecomte live back in the studios in Greenville with more on this special running back for the Tigers. Brad, that's right, a very special run, running back and he's flown under the radar the entire year all while etching his name in the Clemson record books. And trust me, you will remember Wayne Gallman's name after you watch him play. Gallman again, bounced off, a collision, and took the helmet off Stephen Parker. Reckless. Rough. Touchdown, Clemson, Wayne Gallman. Relentless. Ways to describe Wayne Gallman's running style on the gridiron. Ways that have now made the sophomore respected. He's you know, the best running back in the country, and you know I'm glad that he's on my team, glad he's my teammate, and you know, my brother. Goldman entered this season battling for the starting job. He's now the clear number one back for the Tigers, and also number one in the Clemson record books, setting the single season rushing mark held by Raymond Priester. Really, really happy for him, um, just because I believe he is undervalued and underrated, but that's, what I, that's how I like it because it keeps that, that, that chip on his shoulder, it keeps him running tough, keeps him running violent. The praise certainly will come Gallman's way if he leads Clemson to a national title. Gallman will make sure he's reliable. Always gives me a chip on my shoulder, you know. I'm a laid back guy, truthfully. You know, uh, you know the right people are noticing what I am doing, but you know, everybody wants to get out there nationally, and uh, you know, hopefully they'll see that. Now, coaches and players can't stop raving about the type of player and person Wayne Gallman is. Co-offensive coordinator Tony Elliott says Gallman never rests on his laurels. He even finds himself having to tell Gallman to just stop and enjoy the success every once in a while. Something tells me Gallman will definitely do that if Clemson is victorious tonight. I've just had this peace all year long um, that I really can't explain. It's just been a, a, a very spiritual year for me. Must see TV in just a few moments. Brad Fralick goes one on one with Dabo Sweeney, a powerful interview with the Clemson head coach is coming up next. And let's take a live look right now from the Hendricks Student Center in Clemson. The students filing in there as they're getting ready to watch tonight's game and of course tonight's game at the University of Phoenix Stadium in Arizona. And yeah, the fans are gathering there as they're getting ready for kickoff at 830. More on road to the title coming up in just a couple of moments. Welcome back live to Glendale, Arizona in advance of the college football national championship game. When Dabo Sweeney was hired seven years ago, the changes at Clemson began immediately and nearly everything has changed in the past seven years. There are upgrades to everything from the facilities to the support staff. Clemson has become one of the most consistent football programs in the country over the last seven years under Dabo Sweeney. Clemson and Alabama are the only programs in the country that have won at least 10 games in five consecutive seasons. I had a chance to sit down with the Tigers head coach to talk football, but more importantly, to talk about life. Are there any similarities between this team and that 1992 team that you played on? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I think got a bunch of good players. I think we're a lot better offensively. Than, than our 1992 team was. Uh, you had guys like me playing wide out. Uh, 
we had, uh, I think we're, we're, but defensively we were pretty special on that team. Uh, but, but the biggest thing is we were a true team in every sense of the word. We had such an appreciation for one another and, and Coach Stallings created that. I mean, we, we were tough. Uh, we had a belief that we were going to find a way to win and we did all year long. We found different ways to win games um, and we just knew we were going to get it done. Uh, we were a team that, that I think was destined. It was our 100th year of football. Alabama hadn't, it had been a long time since Alabama had won a national championship. We had gone 11-1 and one the year before. We were very close. <clears throat> and um, we had great leadership, great chemistry. And, and those are two things that I think are very underrated on every team. And it's two intangibles, two things that's kind of you can't really touch, uh, but you know it when you see it. And, and this team certainly has that, has had it all year long. Um, and they got a swagger to them, uh, just like we did in 1992. Have you had an opportunity to sit down with Kath and the boys in any time? Has the noise quieted enough where you guys could have a meal together or be sitting around on the couch at night and kind of talk about what this experience is like? Yeah, well, I, you know, I've tried to enjoy it all year long. I really have. I, I, I think that it's important that, that as a man that you take time to just be still, especially as a man of faith. You know, I think that's where the peace comes from. Just be still and carve that time out. Uh, and I try to do that uh, as much as possible. But when the Orange Bowl was over, you know, I gave the coaches Friday and Saturday. You know, we were traveling on Friday and just gave everybody Saturday, you know, just for that reason. I wanted everybody to just kind of, you know, take, take 36 hours here and, and, and just reflect a little bit. Spend some time with your family, enjoy it. And then let's come in here Sunday Let's, 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 you know, guns are blazing here, and let's, man, let's go back to work. And uh, we got 11 days or 10 days to get ready for this next one. And uh, so it's been, it's been great. But once we got plugged back in and, and started the process of, of getting ready for the next opponent, uh, you know, you're just so caught up into the grind of, of getting ready. And then obviously there's a lot more media and things like that that comes with it because there's only two teams left. So everybody's got to find something to talk about. Uh, and I get that. But yeah, it's, it's been a lot of fun, and, and uh, I think everybody's done a good job of enjoying it. You mentioned uh, a couple of weeks ago that this has been a spiritual season yeah. uh, for you, and it, it seems like you probably, the better than anybody I've ever met, are able to recognize some of those things when they come. You don't let those pass by. No, no. I think, well, you know, just, I, first of all, I believe God winks at us. I believe that. But you gotta, you got to be looking. you got to pay attention for that. And... Um, it's, it has been a spiritual year for me. You know, my word, I, I try to pick a word every year. Every year I have a new word. And it's something I started a few years ago. And my word this year was cross. You know, I, I was just sitting at church one day and trying to think about what my word was gonna be. And, and, and cross was my word. That was what was put into my spirit. And I told the team, hey, my word this, because I said, hey, what's your word? Some guys it might be you know, uh, knowledge. Some guys it might be uh, discipline. Some guys, it might be, uh, you know, physicality, whatever. Whatever the word is to help you improve uh, or to have the type of year that you want to have. And, and uh, the word for me was cross. And, uh, you know, I had no idea when, when, when God gave me that word that I was going to lose my father August 8th. And, uh, you know, it's just been, there's just been a lot of, of kind of God winks for me along the way. Uh, but I've had such a great peace with it, you know, and, I, and I'm so thankful for that uh, because, you know, that's what the Holy Spirit does. You know, He just comforts you and, and, and gives you peace when you really shouldn't have it, you know. Uh, you got a goal line stand against Notre Dame or a two point conversion, win or lose, and, you know, I've just had this peace all year long uh, that I really can't explain. And, and so, other than to say that, it's just been a, a, a very spiritual year for me. Uh, and, you know, my father, I've just have, have, have felt this joy, even though it's very sad to know that, that uh, you know, I won't see him again till I, till I get to heaven. But I just have this joy. I can just see his smile and I can feel uh, his peace. And, uh, and then for the season to go like it has and to be playing Alabama, uh, it's just it's just amazing. I tell people all the time, God's got a sense of humor. And, 
You know, I just hope he's a Clemson fan Monday night. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome back out live to Glendale. I want to bring in Jeff Hart. Jeff's covered the Tigers for more than 20 years, yeah. and you were there the day that Dabo Sweeney was hired. Yeah. He goes from receivers coach to head coach, never having called a play. What were your initial thoughts on what his success and what his future would be like with the Clemson Tigers? Well, I guess what I initially thought was the athletic director at the time, Terry Don Phillips, saw something in him. And when we got with with Phillips at that time, he had said, I'd be walking down the hallways and I'd just notice something different about that guy. And it was rare that a person that's not either defensive coordinator or the offensive coordinator doesn't get that job. He does. They have that first practice, 6 o'clock that evening, and he comes in for that press conference around 7.30 and right out of the gate showed his personality saying, you see those poker games? You watch those on television? They are all in. That's what we need to be. And I think what he was saying was, I'm all in. Are you all in? By the next game against Georgia Tech, the first one there was the interim coach. They had already put in the Tiger walk, brought that in, got his first win up against Boston College, the big loss against Florida State, rolled the next three off with a big win over South Carolina, and the rest is history. Dabo Swinney has certainly evolved in his time as head coach. Yeah. Obviously, this was a learn on the job kind of a thing. He had never been a head coach, obviously reached out to peers yeah. in the business. But what have you seen in his evolution? I've watched him for the past five seasons, but you've seen him longer than that. I'll tell you the big part of the evolution to me, and I asked him about this. NC State came in with Russell Wilson. I think that was, I think it was 2010, 2009, 2010. And it was third quarter, fourth quarter. It was a, it was a tight game. And I saw Dabo come down and on the sideline, I'm up, I'm up on the deck with the camera. So I'm, I'm looking at him and he goes into the offensive line huddle. And then he walks down and Kyle Parker is the quarterback at the time and he talks to Kyle Parker. And then he walks down and he starts talking to the receivers. And I'm like, he is over coaching. And later I had an opportunity to ask him, I said, is that the hardest thing you've had to do? You're so hands on. Has it been easy to kind of pull your hands out? And I think right then he realized how important getting that cohesive coaching staff was, and that's exactly what he's done. He's, he's certainly given great bonuses to his coaches, and they like coaching for him, and this is a great coaching staff, and he leads every bit of it. And there, it's a testament to the longevity of some of the coaches on his staff and oh, how long exactly. they've been with him. No yep. question about that. Final question here. Seven years ago, when you sat at that press conference when Dabo Sweeney was hired, did you think we would be standing here at a national championship seven years well, later? Well, who would have known? Who would have known? But I'd say who knew? Terry Don Phillips. He said something that I didn't expect, which I've always held on to, which he said as he introduced him, he said, I believe that Dabo Sweeney will become one of the great college football coaches in this country. And uh, safe to say, he was dead on. Yeah, no question. What a season it has been. Jeff, thanks so much for your yeah, insight. Great to be we with appreciate you, that. Road to the title continues in just a moment. Clemson's first national championship came from an Alabama born head coach. When we come back, the youngest coach ever to win a national championship. Yes, we're talking about Danny Ford, and he is talking Tigers when Road to the title continues. Coach Sweeney and the staff there has just done a tremendous job with the guys and they've done it the right way. So I'm just, I'm very proud to say I'm a Clemson Tiger. Um, I hold my head up high in the locker room and uh, hopefully I'll win some wagers that I've placed this week on the game. Uh, we, we got, there's some Alabama guys in the locker room talking some crap, so we'll see. <laughs> the current Clemson players aren't the only Tigers in the desert. Greenville's Chandler Catanzaro, one of five former Tigers currently on the roster of the Arizona Cardinals. There are more former Clemson players on Arizona's roster than any other team in the NFL. Welcome out back out live to Glendale, Arizona. Mark, Mark Dover rejoins me here in front of University of Phoenix Stadium. And I thought that was interesting. We, as soon as we found out that Clemson's coming to the desert to play for a national championship, we knew that there were some former Tigers that we were going to catch up with. Absolutely. I think as soon as I could grab my phone, I sent a text message to Chandler <laughs> Catanzaro because he's kind of become a friend of the program. Obviously, this television station has covered him since he was in high school, then to Clemson, then on to Arizona. But there are so many more. And when you think about it, that's just a matter of circumstance. That's just something that, that happens through the draft, through free agency, that all these guys have reunited in the desert. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. And Arizona's pretty good, by the way. They've Absolutely. got to play the first round of the NFL playoffs, and they'll play next week. But here is the list of the current Tigers on the Arizona Cardinals. I mean, there are five of these guys, and you will recognize these names. Wide receiver Jerron Brown, 
Chandler Catanzaro, safety Chris Clemens, Andre Ellington, former Clemson running back. Uh, he's turned into a great pro. And then Antoine McLean currently on the practice squad. Uh, and those are just a, the players. There are actually some coaches on this squad. Yeah, LeVon also. Kirkland helps coach this team, and certainly you would think he's done a great job because this is one of the best teams in the National Football League. Of course, LeVon Kirkland, one of the best players ever to play at Clemson, and now he's helping these guys uh, maybe win the NFC. Carolina Panthers might have something to say about that, though. <laughs> and also, Brinson, Brinson Buckner is also a member of the coaching staff. Um, so, yeah, so not just players that play for the Arizona Cardinals from Clemson, but there are some coaches also that are former Clemson players uh, on the Arizona coaching staff. Let's bring back in Ricardo LeCompte for just a moment. Um, and, Ricardo, this is not obviously not Clemson's first national championship run here. They did it in 1981. They also did it with an Alabama-born head coach at that time, and at the time he was the youngest coach ever to win a national championship. Yeah, that's right. And, you know, Clemson fans already know that date, 1981, 34 years ago, and the guy who was leading him. He's got ties to Alabama, and he's the only coach at this moment to lead Clemson to a national championship. WIFF News 4's Mandy Gaither spent a day in Pendleton with Danny Ford, the Bama-born coach who led Clemson to a national title. Surrounded by sounds of cheers and the Tiger rag, the 1981 Clemson football team celebrated something no other had in the university's history, a national championship with coach Danny Ford at the helm. We're just very, very tickled to death, very proud and glad the football game's over because if it, if it lasted much longer, I don't know if we'd been standing up here and been so happy or not. Ford was just 33 years old, the youngest coach in history to win that title. Well, thank you guys for coming out. I'm, now I'm he's in his 60s, and the reporters uh, are back. Real happy for him, real happy for the school and the, the, the Clemson fans. Ford fielding questions yet again about a national championship. This time, this team just one win away from doing what was done 34 years earlier. Look yeah. at you. You were yeah. not happy there. No, I thought we were, <laughs> we should have scored then and we dropped the pass. <laughs> you can still remember? Oh, yeah. Never before has Ford seen this video from that night. The news conference or the players and coaches with tears in their eyes walking off that field. And I remember now Jeff Stock still gives me a ride on his shoulders. What was going through your mind when you were up on the shoulders? I just unbelievable. I mean, I, I really don't believe you could even think about it. Just, just an unbelievable dream that came true. You went to Alabama. Mm -hmm. You won a national championship at Clemson. Yeah. So, which team are you going to be pulling yeah, for? Yeah, I knew on that Monday? was coming. <laughs> uh, it would probably mean more to Clemson than it would be Alabama. I'm going to have to be pulling for Clemson. Mandy Gaither, WYFF News 4 in Pendleton. What a stroll down memory lane for Danny Ford, and we're going to bring back in Brad Freilich and Mark Dofer. And guys, uh, it was very interesting that last line in that story where Clemson went to more. Obviously, if Dabo Sweeney is able to win his first national championship tonight, uh, that would cement his legacy not only in Clemson history, but also in the college football world, putting his name on that stage. But then again, on the other side, you see Nick Saban, who's trying to win a four championship in the last seven years. It's also about his legacy as well, if he can win a national championship tonight. Kind of want to get your thoughts, guys, about that. Well, yeah, no question. I, well, obviously, when you win a national championship, that's going that's to put your name. Secured. Yeah, that's going to put your name in the history books. But I think the similarities between Dabo Sweeney and Danny Ford, while completely different personality-wise, the similarities between these two paths is unbelievable. Now. Dabo Sweeney's a little bit older than Danny Ford was when he won the national championship at Clemson, but Dabo Sweeney, by all standards these days, is still a very much a young head coach. Yeah, it's hard to imagine Danny Ford being in his early 30s and taking over the Clemson program and then building them into a national champion. And it's always interesting when you talk to Danny Ford, he understands that people would put you up on a pedestal for winning a national title at a college football program but he doesn't understand necessarily being on that pedestal. And he doesn't understand why people think that he is this great figure because he will tell you he's just an ordinary farmer from Pendleton. <laughs> but we know that he is anything but an ordinary farmer. I would call him an extraordinary farmer. Yeah, well, he, absolutely. He had unbelievable success at Clemson, leading them to that national championship, the Orange Bowl win. Um, but he, yeah, you're right. He even mentioned, he said, I didn't catch a pass. I, I didn't make a tackle. I didn't do anything in that game to win, but 
Danny Ford is forever etched in Clemson history, and if Dabo Sweeney can win a national championship here tonight, he will do the same for himself. And I think that's where they are a little bit similar, is that they do push the credit off onto their players. And that's, again, that's what Danny Ford always said. He didn't make a tackle, he didn't throw a pass, but he did coach him to the national championship, and by right, that makes him a great coach. Let's talk about the other side tonight. The Alabama Crimson Tide trying to win their fourth national championship in the last seven years. Well, we always like to take a look at the other side, so we try to find an expert from that school. So we grabbed one of the sports reporters from our sister station in Birmingham. Coming up, we'll talk with WVTM's Tom Anino about the Crimson Tide. We'll get his thoughts on tonight's national championship game. In any big matchup, we like to take a look at the other side, and certainly Alabama Clemson qualifies as a big matchup. So we will take a look at the Alabama Crimson Tide with a member of our sister station, WVTM in Birmingham, Tom Menino. And Tom, you've covered Alabama. What are the keys for the Crimson Tide in this game? Well, look, first of all, I think for Alabama, if you look at it objectively, and I preface this by saying I'm, I'm from Massachusetts, I don't root for either side, okay? Objectively, as a football observer, if Alabama plays the way they played against Michigan State, I don't know how Clemson wins the game. Now, will they play that way? I don't know. One of the things that we've talked about in our coverage was a recent Sports Illustrated cover with Wayne Gallman on it where it talked about how Clemson maybe hasn't seen a team like the Crimson Tide. So I ask you, has the Crimson Tide seen a team like Clemson? It's funny because every year it feels like maybe we're in Birmingham. We look at it differently in SEC country that the SEC is down or it's not as good this year. I think Alabama has played some teams that are certainly comparable. Now, I mean, no team is the same, um, but I think, one, I think one thing that is a little ridiculous is everybody thinking that and maybe it's because of the way Alabama beat Michigan State that maybe this is going to be another game where Alabama is going to steamroll their opponent. I mean, I, look, I, I'll be honest. I thought Alabama was going to have a little bit of trouble with Michigan State at times. They didn't. Maybe that'll be the case this time with Clemson. I don't know. But I think Alabama, when you look at some of the teams they played, I mean, maybe a Tennessee with Josh Dobbs. That's one guy that Alabama has talked about as kind of a, a, a quarterback that has a similar kind of style and skill set as Deshaun Watson. Is he as good? Probably not. Who you got, Clemson or Alabama? Again, I say I am not from Alabama, which I always have to say um, because I, I just look at it honestly and objectively. They want it bad. The fans want it bad. And I think Nick Saban wants it worse than he's probably letting on because I don't think he liked how last year ended either. So I, I like Alabama to win the game. I don't think it's going to be anywhere close to Michigan State. I might look foolish. I don't think it's going to be anywhere that, uh, that level of lopsided, but I think Alabama's going to win the game. That's my honest opinion. Tom Anino signs, signs with the national pundits and says Alabama is going to win this game. But Clemson fans, you've been picked against all year, and all you've done is go 14-0. Maybe another good sign for tonight in the national title game. All right, Mark, Tom, thanks so much. Yeah, just, uh, just it, 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 always an interesting take. We always like to hear some flavor from the other side, and those guys cover Alabama every single day, so they know all about them. Specifically, let's talk for a moment about Alabama's head coach, Nick Saban, because he has had unprecedented success at Alabama. Bear Bryant is obviously what most people consider the best college football coach in history. But if Nick Saban is able to win another national championship, the fourth national championship in the last seven seasons, his name will be right alongside Bear Bryant's in the history books at Alabama. It's a big game. There's no doubt. Uh, for every player that's created an opportunity to play in it on both sides. But you got to focus on the next play and do what you have to do to do your job to help your team be successful. And that's the message that we're trying to, to give them so that they can go out and have the best opportunity to be successful. Nick Saban, obviously one of the best coaches in college football. And he has been for some time now, but the success he has had at, at Alabama is unbelievable. It really is. I mean, you think about how hard it is to win in big-time college football and how hard it is to win, say, 10 games a year. And here's a guy who's been winning 12 and 13 and, you know, maybe 14 games in a season. It's really impressive. And I think this week we got a little bit of a different perspective on Nick Saban. He, many times on TV, I feel like he comes off as kind of a prickly character. And really what I gathered this week is that he's very similar to Dabo in the sense that best is the standard 
standard. He just doesn't put it in the same terms as Dabo Sweeney does and doesn't always deliver it with a smile, let's be honest. Well, right, and he doesn't have the personality and charisma that Dabo Sweeney has, but he probably has more of that than most people give him credit for. And he and Dabo Sweeney actually go way back. They actually, they actually have vacation homes in the same spot in Florida, so they do actually spend a little time together during the offseason. But like you said, many of their same characteristics, the things that make them successful, the things that make their programs successful are very similar. Well, when you talk about the similarities between the two programs, Dabo Sweeney always talks about how many players he graduates. It's one of the things that he will bring up first when you ask him about his program. Well, how about Nick Saban? He's got 29 college graduates on the field tonight. It's just another similarity between these two coaches that I think people believe maybe aren't all that similar. Yeah, no, I think you're exactly right. And Dabo Sweeney said they he is trying to build Clemson into what Alabama is, and that is a perennial power. He says they do not want to be a flash in the pan. They He has built this program to be at this level, competing at this level for years and years to come. One more look at University of Phoenix Stadium. When we come back on a road to the title, we hit the lighter side. Well, maybe not weight-wise. But we will put the microphone <laughs> in center Jay Guillermo's hand. We are talking about correspondent Jay Guillermo Excellent. when we come back. How does it feel to know that you're the most loved walk-on by anyone ever in the history of ever other than Rudy? Not nah, Coach Sweeney. Uh, no, not as much as you. The last time Clemson won a national championship, 1981, 34 years ago, that was a different time. Uh, safe to say a few things may have changed. You know, cars have gotten a little more fuel efficient. Maybe they, you know, drive a little faster. But, oh, there's also the ticket prices. Everybody wants a ticket to this game, and they weren't as cheap as they were in 1981. The year was 1981. A buck 25 for a gallon of gas. Just over 78,000 would buy a new house. But for Tiger fans, the biggest thing to come out of that year, this team. Looking back seems like long ago. Okay, we're rolling. Jeff, what about the play on the offensive and defensive lines up front there? What about your situation early? It seems like you guys got the momentum going. Oh, it was a real physical game, especially up front. You know, it was probably the most physical game I've ever been involved with in my collegiate career. To others, that New Year's Day was like yesterday until you start pulling up uh, the past. Now, when I look at that, you know, <laughs> it looks like it was uh, a few years ago that uh, that that, uh, that that took place. But um, just think of the excitement that everybody around here had because it was the first time, obviously. The paper may look worn, but the memories are not. Tim Beret was working for Clemson's athletic department that year. I think we were, how many do we have down there at Miami? Now he's Dabo's go-to guy for sports information. Still, that 81 season sticks close to Beret. Literally, he keeps this memento on his desk at all times, an actual ticket from the game. A nice reminder each day when I come in the office of what that season was like. What a difference 34 years makes. The cost of this ticket back then, $15. The lowest price we could find now, $450. That's not the only thing that's changed. Check out the press guides between the years. Basically, every, all the information that's in here started out off of my electric typewriter <laughs> and Mr. Bradley's electric typewriter. With so many similarities between the 81 season and now, Beret's making new memories while making room on his desk. Mandy Gaither, WYFF News 4 in Clemson. Uh, unbelievable. Unbelievable to see that a ticket in 1981 cost $15. It's hard to believe. And then when you see what some people have paid here tonight, I saw somebody tweet out uh, a week ago. They had a picture of one of the tickets for the national championship game, and he said, this is what $650 looks like. But we do know somebody that came here today without a ticket, and they're in the lower bowl for 200 bucks. And they found that ticket on the ground while they were on the ground here. So it's almost, if you buy them in advance, a lot of times you're paying face value on those tickets, which like Mandy mentioned, uh, were $450 and up. Uh, but yeah, it's interesting to see what 34 years ago looked like uh, as far as ticket prices uh, are concerned. When we come back on Road to the Title. Cannon Smith, um, how does it feel that, to know that you're gonna be an offensive lineman during the spring? Uh, no comment. 
Jay Guillermo, come on down. You're the next Clemson correspondent. You don't want to miss this. And we take a live look at the well in downtown Greenville, where fans are gathering to watch the national championship game. We'll check into the well next on Road to the Title. Welcome back, welcome, welcome back live to Glendale, Arizona. We are inching closer and closer to kickoff between Clemson and Alabama. And what better way to watch this game if you could not venture out here to Arizona with thousands of your closest friends. Here is a look live at the Hendricks Student Center there in Clemson, uh, a gathering party uh, ready to watch this game, ready to watch the Tigers try to bring home a national championship. And if you're in Greenville, we got a place for you to go there too, at the well, the Bon Secours Wellness Arena, throwing open its doors, letting people watch the national championship game. That's where we find WYFF News Force Mike McCormick, live at the well. The party is in full swing inside of a very loud Bon Secours Wellness Arena. Take a look behind me, the crowd is growing. This place can hold about 13,000 people, and as you can see, there are plenty of seats left. It's free to get in, come on out. There's plenty of food and drinks to buy, but again, getting you in the door to watch the game on the big screen is free. They've been having a great time so far with all kinds of games and giveaways, and the fun is going to continue all night long. Remember, room for 13,000 people. No reason you shouldn't come out and join the official watch party here at the well. It's free. We'll send it back to you guys. All right, Mike, thanks so much. Before we get all serious and focus on this national championship game, we've got to let our hair down a little bit. We've got to get silly for a little bit, and that tends to happen at media day because after about 15 or 20 minutes worth of questions, something's going to break loose. And this time what broke loose was Clemson center, Jay Guillermo. I am Jake Guillermo, oh, nice and um, yeah, I'm from the super hot news crew. And um, I just want to know, how do you get such massive arms? Um, you know, really, it's a process. Uh, you know, working out with guys like Ryan Norton, uh, Joe Gore, my fellow senior leaders, uh, they just pushed me to have the biggest arms in the ACC, uh, and I think I've been able to accomplish that. All right, Ray Ray, how do you get such luscious hair? <laughs> Trey, Travion, Travion taught me. Travion, come here, man. Travion got me right, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. There he goes. Travion is his luscious head of hair. Cannon Smith, um, how does it feel that, to know that you're going to be an offensive lineman during the spring? Uh, no comment. Uh, how does it feel to uh, model for Abercrombie? It feels amazing. It feels it's a, it's, a, it's a blessing to have that opportunity. And, you know, I really couldn't do it without you. Well, uh, I've heard from everyone on the team that you have the hottest bod. Is that true? Um... I will not confirm or deny. <laughs> I'll probably I'll confirm that he does. But Ryan Norton has really little arms, but he can bench like six thousand pounds, so it's okay. <laughs> I'm here with Jake Fru Morgan from the Super Hot News Crew. Um, Jake Fru Morgan, how does it feel to be a vampire? Uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Oliver Jones. Well, Oliver Jones, can I speak with you, Oliver Jones? <laughs> <laughs> Oliver, how do you just look so good all the time? Uh, every day when I wake up, I see a picture of Jay Guillermo on my ceiling, and I like I want to be like that guy today. How does it feel to know that you have a worse beard than mine, and mine's already pretty terrible? Ooh, I don't know about that. Yours is really, really bad. So. Yeah, you're you're true. That's true. <laughs> Hunter Renfro, how does it feel to know that you're the most loved walk-on by anyone ever in the history of ever, other than Rudy? Nah, Coach Sweeney. Everyone loves uh, Coach Sweeney. No, not as much as you. How does it feel to know that you'll never be as good as John Cena? It's really tough because he's my hero, but like John Cena is to wrestling like what Jay Guillermo is to football for me. Like I want to be like Jay Guillermo, but it's never going to happen. Well, you know what? I want to be like John Cena too. And John Cena, if you're watching this, I love you. How, quite how big are your arms? Uh, they're about 21 inches. Okay. How much time do you spend sitting like this? Uh, you know, it's just kind of a natural thing. Uh, my lats actually are a huge part of that as well. Um, so, you know, shout out to Coach Batson. Yeah, Coach B for the win. 
Coach B <laughs> for the win. Uh, it was quite a day with Jay Guillermo, and that all happened in about six or seven minutes. Uh, you handed him the microphone, and he just went wild. And I think it really shows something about this team that they have taken time to enjoy this ride. Certainly, there has been pressure at every turn. You talk about a pressure against Notre Dame in the rain, a pressure against Florida State, against rival South Carolina, the ACC title game, the Orange Bowl, coming here to the national title game. They've not hesitated to have fun, and that's really been led by Dabo Sweeney, and it's trickled down to guys like Jay Guillermo. Well, there's absolutely no question. I mean, if you guys remember watching our special from the Orange Bowl, Eric McLean did the same thing. It was pretty hilarious. Jay Guillermo might have gotten him on this one because edged him out a that bit. was really funny. And and uh, you watched it at home, and you saw how funny it was whenever you watched it. Can you imagine me being behind the camera and Jay Guillermo having a microphone in his hand, and I almost couldn't contain myself to keep the shot still. I think the thing that was funny about both of them is that as we were putting them together, we heard those clips 20, 30, maybe 40 <laughs> times, and every time we heard them, we started laughing because it's just hilarious to hear Jay Guillermo go, why do you sit like this? <laughs> oh, so much fun, so much fun. Glad that we could have a little bit of fun at Media Day because really, Media Day is about that kind of stuff. Media Day isn't necessarily about you know, what does Alabama's defense look like? And what is, you know, who, who, who's going to have a big game for Clemson's offense? And yada, yada, yada. I mean, these guys being able to have some fun really was a treat on media day. Well, I think it speaks to what this is. I mean, by the time the teams get to this point, you know, they've practiced enough. They know what the opponent is. They're ready to go. And the game's going to play out how the game plays out. And I think Media Day sort of speaks to that because, like, how many more questions can you possibly ask about Alabama's defensive line or Clemson's quarterback or Alabama's running back? I mean, it just gets to the point where you're like, enough already. Let's have a little fun. And now you get to the point where you're like, let's play some football. Oh, it was absolutely. It, it was so much fun. Okay, the scene is set. Number one, Clemson. Number two, Alabama for the national championship college football playoff year number two. And the Tigers are in it. The winner will claim the national championship. Kickoff is coming up at 830. Unbelievable that we're finally here. Unbelievable to be to this point. It is mid-January and we're talking about a college football game. Not something we've been able to do. Clemson with an opportunity of a lifetime tonight to write its name in the history books if it can knock off the Alabama Crimson Tide. I hope you have enjoyed our Road to the Title special. It has obviously been a lot of fun bringing it to you. From Mark Dofer and our entire crew, I'm Brad Fraley. Good night. Enjoy the game. We will see you afterwards for post-game coverage. If Clemson can win, we'll have you loaded up tomorrow morning. Good night. <laughs>